Hi, and welcome to Miranda Made. This is a specially requested video to make a baby bib. So in this video, I made a true vintage baby bib from a pattern, and then I made my own. It's so easy to do, you can definitely make your own baby bibs. So let's get started and take a look at how I did it. As you can see, this is the pattern I'm going to be using. This is from 1980, and I have the exact same pattern also from the 1970s. We're gonna be making the bib, which is for a size six month old right here, number eight. It's gonna be modified though. I won't be using the ribbons. Instead, I'm going to add snaps. But if you don't have a vintage pattern, no problem. Get a piece of paper, fold it in half so that you can cut out whatever shape you want for the bib. So just take your scissors. If it's folded in half, they will be the same on either side. Okay, here's mine. <laughs> and you can modify it as needed. So here I added a circle, the diameter of a three by three. This will be perfect for an 18 month old baby. That is three inches by three inches, which can be converted for centimeters um, if you needed. And then I used a protractor to connect my lines. As you can see, it's not exactly a perfect circle, but it's pretty close. Here is the original pattern. You can see my shape is a bit fatter, so I might trim it down. And you can also notice that the um, top closure area is a bit skinny on mine. So I will go ahead and add some more fabric, um, even though my pattern is a bit narrow at the top. Okay, so you do cut in the middle of between these two patterns so that they can open, as I'm showing you right here. Right there is you're gonna cut. I'm gonna add the fabric. And then um, you're ready to go ahead and pick out your fabric because see, you'll be able to cut out the neck hole um, by cutting in between those lines. Okay, so six month old and 18 month old is what we have here. Now let's go for a second to the two original vintage patterns. One is for newborn, one is for six month old. Let's just compare these patterns for a minute in case you want to know. The neck hole looks exactly the same and the length is a bit longer on the six month old, but really not enough to matter. Okay, so now going back, I went ahead and cut out the fabric. This is quite of a slippery fabric at the back. And then th these are both more you know, very thin and summer-esque. And this one comes with a um, beautiful embroidery pattern that you can transfer on. Um, you can draw on your own. If you print out a picture, you can definitely make your own at home. But for the time being, I just left my original uh, more plain, no, no embroidery. Okay, so I'm going to transfer it with the iron here. And actually it didn't end up transferring well, but I could see it well enough to make do with what I got. But I suppose it's just too old, even though it had actually never been used. It just didn't do well. But when you're transferring, you wanna be really careful not to move it around, right? So you don't get the markings scattered and pressing it with a hot iron, but at the right temperature, if it's too hot, you can also damage the paper. So yeah, it didn't really come out well, but I could see it faintly enough uh, to make do. However, let's say you're like, oh, I really can't see that or the transfer doesn't work. You can use like a lamp and some clear plastic to um, see the transfer and just trace it with a water soluble pen, which I have done before and shown you in previous videos. So you would just put it right here and put your transfer and uh, put your fabric on top of the transfer and then turn on your light to um, easily see the pattern design. So let me set that up here for you <laughs> so you can see exactly how to do that. And then you don't have to worry about actually ironing it even. Bingo, you can see it so clearly now. If you don't have a lamp, you can use the window of a, um, the window with a bright, sunny daylight coming through. Um, but of course, your fabric needs to be not too opaque. All right, let's go on. 
So here is my original design. I have front side to front side so that I can stitch around it. So first thing is you wanna pin it. You're gonna leave the section at the bottom open. So even if it's not cut perfectly, um, because as you can see, that really slinky um, fabric was a bit challenging to cut on the bottom, it will look fine when you're done. All right, so I went ahead and stitched around and then I clipped the um, round neck hole so that it will lay flat and smooth here. That is really important. If you don't, it'll be kind of wrinkly and rumply and does not lay well. And then you're ready to go ahead and reverse it um, to kind of pull it all the way through and press it. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, the neck hole is quite a bit bigger than the newborn or six month old pattern. All right, so at the bottom, I went ahead and um, pressed it so that way I can stitch it together closed. So I pressed the um, raw edges inward and I'm just going to stitch it all the way across here. Okay, it's finished, but it doesn't look so pretty, right? When you can see the stitching. So I'm going to add a white trim to cover up that stitching. And look at it, so cute, very simple. Um, and again, you could add embroidery before this if you wanted, but it's not really necessary. So I got my trim, I cut my trim, I pinned it, and then I took it to the machine and I've got to stitch it on. All right, going back to the original design, here I have embroidered the little bunny design and now I'm ready to put it together. So it took a little bit longer than my original design. Okay, so again, front side to front side, I'm going to pen and stitch all the way around the bib, except for at the bottom where I will pull it through and close it. Pardon the cat meow. <laughs> so, okay, so now, yeah, I've just got to line it up really well, um, pen and take it over to the machine. All right, so I pulled it through, that's why it's wrinkled, and then I remembered, wait, I gotta cut the notches in order to make it lay flat. So going around and clipping all of the curve so that it's going to lay nice and flat is really important. All right, so here it's completed. Now I'm ready to pull it through. And it, it does require a little bit of practice because if you pull it through and like the, um, and the edges of the bib where you're gonna put the snaps, if you push it too hard, it's not going to be pretty. So it's finding that delicate balance of being able to get those corners out well um, and not pushing it too far. It, it definitely requires a bit of finesse. So I just get my fingers in there to push it out. Yay, we made it. Now we need to go and press it and prepare to sew at the bottom to completely close it off. But it's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna iron everything to make it beautiful. Now having pinned it closed, I'm just gonna sew it up. Isn't it pretty? I went ahead and added rickrack trim, just like I did the other one. And I put my own personal little um, label on there as well. At some point I'll buy labels, but for now, <laughs> I just <laughs> embroidered one because I'm going to give this one away to a friend. All right, so all in all, I made several of these. Here are the three vintage bibs that I made. Aren't they really cute and great gifts? And this is the original design that I made. And I just add the snaps at the top, as you can see. So you can definitely make your own as well. And here they are together. Aren't they cute? 
the vintage, and the original design. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for requesting this video. I'll see you in the next time.